Wigan Sam by Benjamin Briley. Please note the use of the word big house in this poem is referring to a workhouse. There is in Bury's ancient town an inn of good report. Tis not the Albion, Keys, nor Queens, no one of humbler sort, but high it towers above the roofs of swans, grey mares, and grapes, and many a peddling hostelry, its grander neighbour, apes. But none can match the eagle's nest in quality of fair, though some avere the figures high, but such are poor and rare. The cream of good society, the privileged and proud, have on our end for years gone by their patronage bestowed. Look on the stately front and say, Who of plebeian soil shall e'er presume to take its wines or share the barmaid's smile? The host, there's none a neater man, is known in Barry town, can either welcome with a bow or freeze you with a frown. That means when your good company or tavern laws transgress, but though he turns on points so nice, esteem him not the less. A wit he is and fond of joke, albeit to by degree, and though he courts a coronet, to lowly worth is free. What can be said of man the more, however high his birth, the white who owns a generous heart is emperor of the earth. A tight there came to Berry Town, one Wigan Sam by name, a dog whom neither house nor clan nor parish cared to claim. Friends he had none, nor kith nor kin, no home wherein to creep, when winds were fierce and frosts were keen, and snows were wild and deep, save the big house upon the hill, where dwell the lost to earth. Where feeds the vagabond beside the wreck of humble worth? Some lay in fallow half his time within those sheltering walls, nor sought to lift by fruitful toil himself to higher calls. But when the flowers began to peep and birds began to sing, and nettles grew on sunny banks, the firstlings of the spring, then Sam would from his furrow creep, and shaking off the earth, that pauper sloth had heaped on him, for change would wander forth. Mongst Brickcroft's farms and buildings new, a living Sam would make, and sleep at nights in barn or stall, or taproom lodgings take. When other work could not be found, a basket he would sling, and then young onions, mustard, cress, the edibles of spring, or he would trundle through the streets, a one-wheeled truck with sand, and idle back for rags and bones, or aught that came to hand. But Sam had one ambitious wish, though paltry it might seem, to raise a modest donkey cart with single brute or team. Yet how the needful to obtain such rolling stock to buy, had bothered off his scheming pate, and turned his wits awry. But lucky thought each dog's his hour, and Sam's had come at last, his wanderings through the streets one day, the eerie led him past. Mine host just out to Bambox turned, stood whistling at the door, with hands deep in his pockets thrust, their contents jingling o'er. Our vagabond from Wigan town, soon Boniface espied, and waxing keen to try a joke, thus to the yokel cried, Hello, old sinner, what's your game? You're out again, I see. No work, eh? Old story, Sam. Oh, want to speak to me? Well, cut it short, what is you want? A friend, was Sam's reply. I want to raise a sovereign, a jackass cart to buy. I know where I can have a moke two days a week or so, and if you will lend me twenty bob, you ain't beat best friend, I know. But what security can't give? My nose said with a grin. A man these times must have some old before he parts with tin. That's bothered me for weeks and months, said Sam with hopeful leer. But now I've getting o'er it straight and tidy. It's just here. I was thinking, if you lent me brass, 
that I could make a start for security and such as that, you could have your name on cart.